In the next series of lectures, we'll talk about locomotion. For humans, that means walking and running, perhaps skipping. For kangaroos, it's hopping. Now, of course, we can hop. It's an inefficient way to move. But what we'll see is that running is not unlike one-legged hopping. So studying kangaroos can actually be quite helpful. We'll cover material from chapter two and chapter three in the Biomechanics of Movement book. For walking, we'll see that the period of time when both feet are on the ground, which is shown here, is critically important. You can see, if you look at this open sim model, that during this phase of walking, which we call double support, that the ground reaction forces that are shown in arrows here are directed upward, supporting body weight. The arrow on the leading limb is directed upward to support body weight and backward towards the back of the body. On the trailing limb, it's just the opposite. It's support, supporting body weight upward, but it's also directed forward. And we'll learn exactly what this means in terms of how we support body weight and control our speed. Now, learning to walk is a life-changing event. Walking's fundamental to being human. And one of the grand challenges in biomechanics is to see a, a beautiful being like this little dude learning to walk and develop a framework for thinking about taking steps. So how do we develop this framework? Well, one way is to develop a model that is useful for reasoning about walking. In the book, chapter two covers walking and we'll see that very simple of models of walking that I'm showing here can provide helpful insights into walking dynamics. The very simplest model, the inverted pendulum that you can see up here, was quite helpful in understanding in the early years the walking dynamics. Later on, that was refined to this dynamic walking model that you see here that we'll discuss later. Now in chapter three, we'll cover running, and a different model is helpful. In this model, we characterize the leg as a spring. As your mass center drops during the stance phase of gait, we absorb energy in that leg spring. That energy is then released as we moved into the flight phase of running. So understanding the dynamics of running on a springy leg is surprisingly powerful. For example, it can help you design a springy prosthetic feet like the one shown here and was used by Amy Palermo Winters to set a world record in the marathon in, in Chicago in 2006. We'll see that simple models can be helpful for understanding walking and running. In chapter two, as I mentioned, we'll start by modeling the motion of the legs as an inverted pendulum with, with a rigid leg in chapter three, we'll model running on this bouncy leg. What we'll see is that we can actually combine these. Hermit Geyer and his colleagues proposed this unified model of walking and running that overcomes some of the limitations of these very simple models. So we'll talk about this uh, more integrated model of walking and running later on in the series of lectures. So what's our agenda for studying locomotion? We have a number of different talking points here. So we'll first talk about the walking gait cycle. We'll then talk about force measurements during walking, energetics of walking, very simple models of walking. We'll dive into a little bit more detail. Then we'll contrast and compare walking and running, elastic storage of energy, which is particularly important in running, We'll talk about gait transitions. For kangaroos, that's transitioning from a funny pentapedal gait where they use their forelimbs, their hind limbs, and tail. And for humans, it's the transition from walking to running. I'm sure you've all been in that scenario where you're walking, you wanna go faster and faster, and you eventually break into a run. So what's driving that transition from walking to running? We call that a gait transi transition, and we'll see uh, what's driving that. Now you'll notice that these models are very simple. So we'll conclude this series of lectures by 
talking about what's missing from these simple models. You may have noticed at the outset that what's missing is a lot of things, a torso, a head, arms, but critically important, what's missing is muscle. So we will first use these simple models, we'll see what's missing, and then that will lead us to discussions of muscle and muscle-actuated locomotion. So that's it, we'll see you in the next sequence.